Welcome to Rick's Corner. I have John Hart back, who's the WNBF Natural Pro Mr. America. And he's got the, the trophies and the pictures to prove it. And I've had him on once before. And we decided to talk a little bit more about training and natural training. And, and he's a good guy to talk to about it because uh, he's living proof that you don't have to do drugs to be, be in good shape. You know, it's everybody says, what are you taking? What are you taking? What are you taking? And we know that there's a lot of guys that take everything. And I've taken the same thing. But in reality, you don't have to take stuff to get big. And, and not necessarily big, but look symmetrical and look in shape. Yeah. Yeah, that's... That's the key word you just used there. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the nice introduction, by the way. Oh, I'm very uh, good at this. I've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, symmetrical look, uh, you know, not overblown, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, you see me in my T-shirt. I'm not overblown. I'm. Just, I'll, he'll put up some pictures. Yeah, I'll put you know, pictures from up for sure. Uh, that obviously, it's more. I'm more of a stage bodybuilder. I'm not a walking around the gym trying to impress at 300 pounds or. You know, 250 pounds of muscle bursting out of my shirt type of, type of bodybuilder and exhibiting gigantic amounts of strength that is just uh, pretty much inhuman. Yeah, we see people doing that a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because um, when you said that, looking big in your clothes and all that, years ago when I moved down here to train, you always wore your sweatshirts inside out. The fleece was on the outside. I don't know if you remember this. And it was all matted down from washing all the time, but the sweatshirts were wearing inside out. Right. Underneath the sweatshirt, you had a t-shirt. Right. Over the sweatshirt, you had a big plaid shirt or another shirt, and then you had a jacket. And this is what a lot of guys, no, no, this is true. This is what a lot of guys would do just to look bigger. Yeah. And so I did it. I did it because I thought they're going to do it. I'm going to do it. So mm -hmm. I go out with this girl I meet in the marina. She's really hot. And I'm sitting. She says, "Are you? Aren't you hot?" I said, "I'm burning up." She says, "Why do you have four? Why do you have four layers of clothes on?" I said, "I don't know. I just because because I'm insecure. Yeah, yeah, I want to look big, you know." <laughs> but the thing was, is that a lot of the guys that had this big look, when they take the shirts off, they had no they had no cuts, so mm -hmm. they looked even fatter yeah. without them. Whereas you get people like even Frank Zane, for example, you could never tell in the shirt that he was huge when he took it off. He was ripped. He looked twice the size. Yes. So yes. so basically. Staying leaner and harder and more muscular, you look much bigger outside your clothes than yeah. you do with them on. However, mm -hmm. the other theory is is that, uh, like with a woman, I don't want to see her naked. I want to see a hint of a little stuff here and there. That my imagination thinks she's got a good body. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if you have a good body and the clothes hang properly, you'll know you're in good shape. Well, now you're talking about dressing right, too. Oh, yeah, dressing knowing, right. Knowing how you look and dressing just right, right. for it. So, uh, I agree. You know. Okay. This brings me on to the point of symmetry because, yeah. and then we're going to talk about all this natural mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, back in the day of Steve Reeves and the, and, the, and the golden era bodybuilders, everybody was symmetrical. They had the broad shoulders and they had the small waist. This is the epitome of what a bodybuilder was supposed to be. Right. You work out, you know, you want, I want to get the broad shoulders and the V tape. I want the V tape. I want these right. lats. You know, they call them wings, of course. They had right. different terminology. And that was the desired look. And this is the desired look that women would see a guy and say, look at that guy's body. He's got those broad shoulders and that small little tiny waist. Man, this guy's in good shape. Yeah. yeah. Over the years, it changed to what it is today. Mm -hmm. And then they say, look at that guy's body. He looks like a hippopotamus, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, no disrespect to these guys, they're huge. Yeah. But then when they put clothes on, they can hardly walk. They're lumbering around the gym like elephants. Their legs right. are touching. Their bag, pants are baggy. Their shirts are baggy. And you can't tell what they They look like fat guys. Yeah, and that's the image. You have that right. I yeah. mean, it's 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 not a good one. No. And, uh, I, you know, uh, over time, we've seen uh, everything from the, you remember back in the uh, 90, early 90s, late 80s, the, the, the baggy pants, the platinum everywhere, the crazy wear, mm -hmm. and, and the boat neck. You well, know, I and had my big boy clothing line. It was boat neck. It yeah. was rag tops and baggy pants. That was the look in the 80s. That was the look in the 80s. And, and it gave it sort of a idea of a little symmetry. Remember the cinched yes, waist yes, and all that stuff? Yes. So it tried to bring that back a little bit as far as the clothing goes, but mm -hmm. it just looked kind of funny because people were wearing clothes that made them look like clowns as far as the patterns and stuff go. Yeah, they know? were flashy. They were flashy. I mean, yes. I had those. The thing is with the, with the we called it a, um, it wasn't a boat neck. It was, um, oh shit, it was a rag top. Maybe it was a boat neck. But it may, if you had good traps, they still got the look. Yeah, they look great. They look, look great. great. But you did. You, you made a good point too just now, where you said, you know, back in the golden era and everything from Steve Reeves on. Uh, you know, we heard uh, in the magazines it was always mentioned things like you know, having nice proportion between the measurement of your neck, your bicep, and your calf. Right. Ideally, we wanted to have them just somewhat really close to each very other. Close. And it's not a coincidence that when they are very close to the eye, seeing that. It's it's not just pretty. It's there's something about it that just goes yes. 
Right. That looks good. That looks good. And it's not a, a few people will say that. It's a consensus. Yes. Uh, everybody seems to agree on that. And yes, that X frame too. That people mm -hmm. like, uh, if you remember back in the '80s, Tony Pearson. Mm -hmm. He had a nice wide shoulder, yeah, tiny looks good. waist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah some video recently. Yeah. Getting that small waist and uh, and a tra and it was not just a a training for that look and. Uh, yes, there's a different chemical situation going on, obviously, right, in most right. of bodybuilding today. But uh, and that's where the natural comes in. We have other options, but uh, also the eating patterns. You know, I remember seeing things like you mentioned Al Beckles before yeah. we started this interview to me, and uh, being a good friend of yours. Now I remember reading about how Al Beckles used to before a contest, he would have a, a small can of tuna fish and some pineapple, mm -hmm. and that was a meal. You know, and today they laugh at that because the amount of food that that represents is tiny. He never ate a whole lot. In fact, I said, "What do you cheat with?" He says, "I I cheat with brown rice. That's what's cheating." I mean, you understand? Yeah. I I cheat. I can knock out six slices of pizza, eight slices like that. Oh, yeah. You Cookies, know, all that stuff. So, it, it, but you see, right? He had longevity of a career, right. and he wasn't exactly you know the Bob Paris type, but he did have smaller waist. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, hell of a body. The thing is, with you're talking about the neck, and I had done a couple of Rick Stips of the week about working my neck. I put a I put a pad on a bar, and I'd work my neck front to back, side to side. And a couple of guys mm -hmm. said, "Oh, that's really stupid. Who would do a thing like that?" I do. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Because the first thing you see sticking out of a collar is right the person's there. neck. Right. And there. if you got a neck like a stack of dimes, it shows weakness. It doesn't show any any strength. You see a guy with a big neck, you know right away that guy's got a right. good body underneath it. And it and it, it pays to work your neck. The other thing I got out of that, I used to have my girlfriend or someone work my neck and someone made fun of that. She would push on my head this way, sideways, right. sideways, you know, made something sexual out of it. But you need resistance. And I learned this from wrestlers when I was going on the road wrestling. In the dressing room, before we go out, we'd work each other's neck to get it loose and supple. The blood comes up and it fills it up and it alleviates headaches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Oh, yeah. I've you trained this thing. Yeah, you know exactly <laughs> what I mean. I know exactly it it what makes you mean. a huge difference. Yes. And um, I couldn't do wrestler's bridge because it would pull my hair. Mm -hmm. It just would yank my hair out. So I'd rather use the resistance. I use neck straps and all that. But working a, a good sized neck looks good on people. Yeah, it does. And, uh, uh, and, it, it's a muscle, just like everything else. Exactly. If you're not going to train it, that's the other thing too. At least train it infrequently, yeah. because if you're not going to train it, there will be muscle imbalances. Yes. All of a sudden, those little muscles underneath the traps, which you know they root themselves off the neck, right? There'll be a problem. So right. as a trainer, I'm a trainer too. Right. Okay. So as a trainer, I know that occasionally it's important to throw in a neck exercise here and there. Um, at least, like you said, the manual resistance yeah. is awesome, and then having a good uh, neck harness. Yeah. Or, of course, the Nautilus and uh, the old hammer strength neck machines. Are very oh, yeah, they make too. neck machines. I tried so, one down in Venice and it was okay. I liked using a partner. It worked. And I'm not going to go on the subject all the way, but I did draw, download a picture of donkey calf raises because we would do this in the gym now. People say, why is that guy sitting on your back? That looks awfully gay. You know what? We did this back in the day. We had a block. Someone hopped on your back. You did your donkeys. I had the best calf development in the world off that exercise. All right. If any of these guys watching this know any of my videos that are out there, they know my favorite calf exercise, okay? Is and that that's it? donkey calf race. They're the best. I have a block that Joe Gold made from yes. it. Yes. It was at World Gym, but he gave it to me. Right. A metal block that he made, and I pull it up to a Smith machine, and I just lean on the Smith machine. I can strap a heavy you have dumbbell. You on your back? Yes. I can strap a heavy dumbbell around my waist and have a 280-pound guy sit on my I back. I used to have a guy and my girlfriend get on my back, and there'd be two of them up and down, and then right. when I couldn't do any more, she'd hop off, one would stay on, he'd hop off, and I'd stretch. Right, right, right. And that sucker worked. You burn time. them up. Yes. Oh, no, and they pump up like nobody's business. There's yeah. something about those. So direct. I'm glad we're talking about neck and arm and calf training. That's my favorite yeah. stuff right there. You got to do it. You know, calf training, donkey calf raises, number one. If you're number not one. doing them, funny story. I was at Gold's in Venice, and I was training one day, and I was sitting, I had two guys sitting on my back. We were doing them old school style. Mm -hmm. Two guys, no added weight around the waist. Uh, but they were sitting on my back, and we'd rotate, all three of us, right? Mm -hmm. And I was in, in mid-set, and all of a sudden, I heard one of the trainers, I won't say who it is, because you know who it is, uh, walking on by, and he goes, he looks down, and he says, Hey, what are they doing? There's a machine for that, like that. Because Gold's Gym, of course, had a donkey yeah, calf yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah. And as I was doing the set, I, I didn't open my mouth, but I looked across at his calves, and those little 13-inch monsters he had underneath his knee, I thought... <laughs> I would have said something. No wonder yeah. he's using that machine. You know, keep using it. <laughs> I would have said something to him. I don't have comments like that. How's that working out for you? I'm educated. Right? Uh, natural training. Yes. And let's talk about this for a minute. Yes. Because uh, when you're on the juice, when I was on the juice, a lot of guys... I would always get a tremendous pump. Yeah. But I 
started training natural, of course, in the beginning, and I trained natural for a long period of time. I got my bench press over 325, 350, and, and uh, I'd go to the gym, and I would pump up like mad without anything other than food. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when you're training natural like that, how do you regulate your diet before training so that when you go into the gym and you have enough in your system that your body, built, your body will pump? Absolutely cannot miss a meal. Okay. That's number one. You know, yeah. Cannot miss a meal. You're, you're off season, in season, doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're, if you know your metabolism and you're a five meal a day type of guy, or I'm a eight meal a day type of guy, I need those eight meals. Uh, I need carbs, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a certain amount of carbs before training. Uh, regulating it, very important. It, it, you know, there's a little bit of a, a I don't want to say a, a ritual, but there's, you know, regularity of an hour before that workout. I have to have a certain amount of food in me, carbohydrates, some protein, uh, not much in the way of fats, uh, but calorically I'm controlled. You know, I How many calories do you get a day? Uh, off season, that can be, that'll be $3,300. Dollars. I'll take the dollars. Thirty three hundred dollars <laughs> every day. Buys me a lot of calories. <laughs> Thirty three hundred per day, and then it's not a whole lot. No, it's not. No, it's not. And then uh, pre contest, but it's enough. It, it keeps me going. Yeah. And it allows for a small uh, weight increase. Small in my off season. Uh, I don't go up thirty pounds. I'm within eight or ten pounds of the contest at all times. So it makes it much easier because as we, we talked about this in one of our previous interviews, how mm -hmm. being natural, if you go up 25 pounds to drop that 20, 22, 23, uh, naturally, you're going to really torch off a lot of that muscular gain that yeah. you made in the off season too. So it's not just the fat and then the skin is ugly too. So as far as getting the weight down, yeah. when once you've gone up too high, it's trouble as a natural. So. Uh, Contr uh, controlling those calories, very important. Controlling those calories and knowing how much you eat. Not just eat clean, because to be honest with you, I don't eat clean. I like cake. I okay? do good. I had a big piece of carrot cake. Uh, this is one of the things I do before no, we do our interviews, way. by the way. I'm the same way. A big piece of carrot cake before I came down yeah. here. Yeah, I bought yeah. some vegan cookies at Trader Joe's. They're delicious. There you go. But but, you, but in my case, I have to know how much I'm eating. Yeah. You know, so I have to know. Uh, well, the thing is, and this is my, I might have one or two later, I may not, but I had salmon and a little brown rice and yams for lunch, so sure. that's pretty clean. Sure. You know, oatmeal and, and eggs for breakfast and a protein drinks all through the day. And then if I want to cheat a little bit with a dessert, I'll do it, but I'm not going to compete anymore. What does it matter anyway? Well, that's different though. You're yeah. talking about, you know, doing it as a natural body, right. yeah, yeah, a yeah, competitive yeah. one. But, but still, no, no, but the thing is, is that at my age, I want to keep my body fat low. And right. my metabolism changes every decade, every decade, every decade. So I've still got to watch it like I'm competing if I want to keep my body fat. Of course. Up, and naturally. Of course. One, one of the things I'd like to add too is, is that, um, you know, the last couple of interviews that we did, I saw, you know, someone told me, I didn't realize at the bottom of these YouTube videos that we do, you know, there's, there's comments, you know. Oh, there's tons of comments. I didn't I know. <laughs> I didn't know. So just recently, somebody told me, wow, they're making a lot of comments on your video. So yeah. I actually looked and, you know, Guys concerned about who's natural, who's not natural, and does it look concern. natural, and that, and, and I'm not going to say anything bad about that. But what what did strike me was um, there's definitely a difference between you know someone who's trained for a competition and stepped on stage and in really good shape and did all the work that it takes to get in that kind of shape. They know, and I've seen all the guys that I compete against and the, and all around the world now. It's international that. In their clothes, they're relatively small looking or athletic looking. Like I we said, say. right. Not like a bodybuilder, but then not like a, uh, 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 the other version of a bodybuilder. Yeah. But uh, so many things happen to the muscle, and the skin does retract tightly around those muscles when you bring that body fat down, when you're prepping for a contest, that it can look unnatural to somebody whose eyes are seeing through a non-competitive mm -hmm. eyeball, mm -hmm. someone who does not compete. Mm -hmm. They don't know firsthand that you can get glute striations. You can get very deep, deep definition in your hamstring glute if you die properly. tie-in. Correct. You get striations in your delts, you get striations in your abs, you get veins all up like this. Right. And that's just a matter of bringing the body fat down and having nice skin. Right. Uh, when you do it competitively, it's a different ball game altogether. So I, I just wanted to make that mention. Well, you also have a factor that a lot of people don't realize that, uh, that there's water under your skin. Yeah. And people retain water, which covers up their muscularity. Right. So they'll do a diuretic before a show to get the water out. Right. Sometimes when they take the water, the water comes out of the muscle and then you look flat and the muscle shrinks up. Too much, So for right. you guys don't, don't know, you just don't eat and train and go do a show. There's all these little factors that enter in. And right. it's, it's, it's hard to really understand that at some time. I had a friend that just did this recently and he got too skinny the night of the show. Because right. you drop way too much water. Flat, 
skinny and right. the skin became it's loose. Loose because hanging. It, 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 that's, that's the worst combination. But yeah. I wanted to address this because, you know, from here, I just wanted to address it. That, that uh, guys watching, you know, it's if you haven't competed, then you know you don't know firsthand the changes that happen in your physique as you're dieting down uh, as you're training hard yes there's some cardio involved yes the diet is tight you have to be on with it and the reward for that is especially much like uh, you know on um, IFBB or NPC bodybuilding day by day as the show gets closer and you get leaner you see changes daily in those last 45 oh, 60 sure. days you sure. know that you you wake up in the morning with a rush to see what you look like exactly you know because those changes when you only have five pounds of fat to lose and you lose one pound of those five that's 20 percent oh, yeah. of your body fat that you just dropped yeah and it looks phenomenal when you wake up in the morning and see what you look like and so for some guys you know I can see I you know I'm not the biggest natural there are some that are bigger than me and uh, and they're great that's all know. genetics uh, you know what there's there's the number one training yeah deal is be born with great genetics yes, genetics and then do the right training with it and but, you'll be good but, but real quick i want to talk about cardio because i had made some statements on here that i didn't think cardio burned fat right. and yet you see people in the gym doing cardio and they say oh, i'm burning fat and i'm getting leaner and leaner some people are but for the most part i never really noticed any fat loss from doing cardio i did it for my heart and my circulation uh and i look at the calories sure you burn calories and calories come down if you burn calories hopefully you're going to lose some body fat but just to burn fat i never noticed any fat coming off me and back in the day we didn't do cardio right. because we didn't have any machines right so I didn't even know what it, it was. Did it through your diet? Did it through the diet. That right. was the lack of carbs. Right. And then someone would say, well, how'd you go all week long and train without any carbs? I don't know. I just did. You know, it's just the way you lived. You, you got up and you had your hamburger patty and eggs and you did right. throughout the day the same thing until Saturday night or Sunday. And that was your carb day. And that would last you through the week. Right. right. Zabel Kazuki told me once, he says, Rick, don't do the whole week like that. Take Wednesday and enjoy yourself and have some carbs midweek and then go back on your diet because you need a little bit. And it made sense. Because right. otherwise I was going crazy. Your muscles filled up, but your brain felt great, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. You know, uh, diet-wise uh, versus cardio, without a doubt, uh, the diet can handle way more. Yeah. It's much easier to cut your calories overall, even if it is from carbs. 500 per day times 7, that's 3,500 calories. In the course of one week, you just dropped one pound of fat. If you're eating 3,500 a day, that's painless. Mm -hmm. That's unnoticeable Yeah. Uh, as far as cutting down from right. 3,500 to 3,000. But the look will change. You'll drop that one pound of body fat, especially if you're not too high up, okay? But secondarily, the cardio becomes a, a necessary, for me, uh, it's a necessary facet of, uh, of competing, okay? I don't particularly like it. I didn't get involved in bodybuilding. Everybody who's seen me on, on social media knows I am not into cardio. Uh, I believe that doing, I'll superset squats, benches, deadlift, rows, and men, you think your heart rate goes up doing cardio? It does not go up doing cardio. This gets your heart rate up because it'll shoot way on up there and it'll strengthen your heart and your lungs and your circulatory system. Uh, the cardio itself, I understand people have to do it for their heart, the cardiovascular well, system. And on my yes. case, in my case, I do it as a a necessary thing at the right time. I don't do it year well, round. Well, Diamond Dallas Page has DDP yoga, and his yoga is holding and moving and, and doing like posing. I yes. said to him one day, it's like doing posing. He says, yeah. He says, I can burn like all these calories within two or three minutes and raise my heart rate from 80 to 130 within two minutes right. by just doing the, the, the yoga that he was doing. Right. Well, it's the same thing with aerobic weight workouts. If you do supersets and you're going boom, 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 right. boom, Giant sets. your heart rate's Oof. going up and you're burning fat. Right. And you're burning fat. Now, posing too burns fat. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. It, it'll bring out muscularity. Pre -contest, it'll, pre -contest. It brings out muscularity. If you guys were to, to get in front of a mirror every night before you shower and yes. pose for 10 minutes. Yes. And don't laugh at yourself, but take it serious and, and hit some good poses. Within a few weeks, you're getting this real muscular look and all the muscles are coming yep. out and standing up and you're burning body fat because it's hard to do. It's actually harder than a workout. It, it is at first. You'll be cramping. Yes. It'll take a week or two to get used to it. Yeah. If you do a little bit each day, uh, we can save we can save all of you guys a, a whole ton of money that you're spending on supplements right now on certain supplements that you just don't need that are making promises of increasing certain muscularity yeah. or certain look in your body mm -hmm. that if you only practiced posing when you were fairly lean yeah. you would notice how little parts of the muscles start to jump and show little parts of your intercostals yeah. your your serratus start to pop out yes. back muscles when you practice back shots yeah. glutes hamstrings all these little muscles that with proper regular posing again pre-contest is something i have to do uh, as a natural pro 
uh, you know, I'm competing against the best in the world, detailed to no end and, yeah. and symmetrical too. So the, the main point of that is, is that posing becomes a form of exercise for me as well. So we have to find a fine balance between weight training, diet, cardio, and posing because you have to be controlled on stage. There's right. nothing worse than seeing a bodybuilder that has a great body on stage shaking like a leaf. You know, yeah, how about exactly. some fries to go with that shake, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so it doesn't look well, right. Well, it's the same principle. If you're doing curls and you're curling the bicep, then you come home and you pose in the mirror with the bicep. Yeah. You're doing the same thing as a curl. Yeah. You're exercising the bicep, but you're holding it and you're holding it and squeezing it. And the bicep starts to respond and respond and respond. I've seen guys do this for years back in the day at Golden Era. You know, they're they, connecting their brain yeah. with that muscle. All of a sudden, five minutes into the double bicep, like with Arnold back in the dressing room yeah. and posing, all of a sudden the arm just went just yeah. expanded, you know, yes. from the posing. Yes, and it, it's going to also help with training too because yeah. you're connecting better with each muscle. And you, you get learn. a better pump. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm agreeing with you yeah. that if you have trouble with your, you know, if you don't have strong lats and you need to make your lats better, I would do a mirror setup in my room so I could see my back muscles and do back double biceps and mm -hmm. lat spreads. So I'll figure a way of connecting my brain to my lats and, and in a better way, neuromuscular right. connection so I can get those muscle fibers to fire better. Now when I go in and do my weight training, it's easier for me to connect and get an immediate pump. Because you know what you're feeling for. In the muscle, yeah. correct. So exactly. from my brain to that muscle. But let me bring up something to you, okay? Yep. So this is interesting because you brought this up before we even walked in the door. Uh, when I walked in the door. Uh, when you talked about symmetry and you, asked, you brought in the subject of natural bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. In, and I'll give you some pictures again. You'll, you guys got to see what our lineup looked like at the last World Championships, even in the heavyweight class. Uh, there are way more symmetrical looking bodybuilders in the natural bodybuilding in the WNBF mm -hmm. in one lineup, okay? When we come in shape, of course, right. uh, with the tiny waist, with the wide shoulders, with the uh, calves are still not judged in bodybuilding. <laughs> no, well, calves are just, they're that genetic thing anyway. Everything to the knee, yeah, okay? Calves is, are genetic. You they know. judge. But that look that we're talking about, having that kind of symmetry from the front, from the back, we do a symmetry round where all we do is quarter turns, and that symmetry round is seriously judged. And it's the great, I think it's a great advantage that if you're going to do it and year to year take progress pictures, like a lot of my competitors have done with me. We're all friends. A lot of us, we're, we're really good friends. It's a great part about natural bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. is that there is that, that little bit of camaraderie. Sure, sure. That I probably have met my best friends just in the last three years competing in the WNBF. And they're, half of them aren't even in this country. They're right. fantastic guys. So my point is, is that as you go and you continue to train and take those progress pictures, you'll actually see how the muscles have changed. The muscles have gotten denser. Uh, it is a mature maturity yeah type maturity issue for sure of yeah. training but it does not go away that's the part that if there's anything i could you know convince some of you guys that are that are on the fence right now stick to it stay with it stay with the natural end of it find better ways of training Find uh, I do online training now it's a it's a plug right here right uh, you were going to ask i know you we're going to get into that too yes. because we're going to so it. so overall if you just stick with it find better ways of training Find out better ways. Ask questions of people who are doing it. With social media these days, you can contact oh, anybody. You can contact. You can. You know what? You can YouTube and Google anything. It's on there. Yeah, I had right. to fix something on a computer. I YouTube and I found out. And the guy, the twelve-year-old kid, walked me through this with an editing thing, and I learned. Yeah. So, so bodybuilding has become not just for me, but for a lot of men and yeah. women out there, more of a a long term, uh, you know, a marathon rather than a sprint. It's it's not we're going to get all these results in the next two years. I don't even think that. I think more in terms of well, you know, how's the next five years going to look? You know, as far as training, competing, my look. What am I trying to improve upon? Mm -hmm. And I'll I'll give you a split screen picture, you know, that you can put up that'll show in just a six month period of how I, I did change from one show in November last year, 13, to the second one which was in May mm -hmm. of 14, just six exact months later, again, being natural and just being diligent about keep, keeping my weight under control, not missing meals, training hard, and uh, you know, and getting good rest, of course. Yeah, Supplements, uh, you know, there oh, rest some is a huge factor. Good ones. So now let's talk about your, uh, your, your training and where we can find you on the internet. Okay, um, I have uh, a website, it's called IntenseHeart.com, I-N-T-E-N-S-E-H-E-A-R-T.com. And uh, on there, I, I, on the cover page, it talks about how I do online training and coaching. Okay. 
uh, you know, this diet and training, and I manage their routines. Okay. And uh, and so we get some really good results with that. I've had some really good testimonials. There's a testimonial page that'll show a lot of the results that the people have had. And I don't mean just one or two. I mean these are international. Yeah. So the guys, yeah. the females, um, they've done really well, and it's. It's the ones who take the advice and actually sure. apply it. Sure. Okay, so if they're receiving it and applying it, that works. I'm also on Facebook. I'm also a Twitter guy. Right. Okay, so uh, Instagram, you know, I know it's very popular. I'm a Facebook. I'm on Instagram too, but I'm a Facebook and I'm a Twitter guy. I, I use Instagram them. when I can if I have my phone. Otherwise, I don't use it that often. Right. Uh, yeah, I think that if people want to look you up, they should. And it's John Hart, H E A R T. Yes, H E A R T. And uh, if you have something to offer, they can email you and talk to you about it and train them. Yeah. And we also have the book that's been doing very well since so, our last. You you mentioned yes. my book. He held up my book six I months did. ago. This thing when he held that thing up, the sales psh, through the roof. Thank you. It was awesome, and it's continuing on to this day. You can find it, Mr. America's Shape Up series. Did right. I mention it, Mr. America's Shape Up series by John Hart. It's on Amazon, and I'll also have a uh, picture. Yeah, I'll run here. the cover for it. Yeah, right for sure. Right on. Well, I want to thank you for being here. No, thank you. Yeah, this has been really, really very it. enlightening, and we talked about things that I didn't know we were going to talk about. And that's what I like about this show, because we can go in many different directions, right. and things spur on something else and something else. The symmetry of the diet, the posing, I didn't know we were going to get into that, but that's right. a huge factor that we need to touch on, yeah. because the guys at home want to know how they can be better at what they do. And when you listen to guys like me and John Hart, and we're telling you from experience, if you do these things at home, you will get better at what you do. Yes. And I'm thankful that you guys watched Rick's Corner. We're getting into the holidays. I'm going to do a few more shows and I'm going to take off and wait for Santa. And I'll be accepting all gifts, so send me whatever you want. <laughs> and have a happy holiday, safe holiday, and I'll see you next time on Rick's Corner. Bye bye. Thank you. It's RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.